Yeah, I just finished eating my uh, emergency rations. I just had an emergency drink of water. <clears throat> I see. Yeah. Are you are you ready anytime? Yep. All right. Well, uh, uh, I, uh, I I I must be doing something wrong, but uh, it's uh, it's too late. That showbiz uh, show must go on. Show must go on. Uh, there's a song uh, across from uh, George Shooter Nolan podcast reporting Terrible. for duty reporting for uh this is uh another another magical time uh how, how you doing george oh i am doing well oh good good I'm how about you about that you what what oh yeah uh what yeah i'm glad you're doing well, you got any? You got any of your your uh, shout outs? Columbus, Ohio. Oh my! Oh my! Good, good Columbus. Good old Columbus. It's also the capital city of uh, of Ohio. Yes, Ohio. Yeah. Yep. Well, uh, uh, good uh, good place to pick. Good uh, shout out. That's a that's a fancy one. Yep, mid nice mid sized city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it seems pretty big to me, but uh, you know, also I also Chicago. What what's in uh why why should I go to Chicago? Well, it's just bigger. Yeah, you know, Chicago's way bigger. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I uh, yeah. Well, uh, I'll I'll shout out Chicago. Blessed. Uh, Chicago. Um, well, uh, what's what's the latest, George? You got you got any more of your your uh, adventures? You're you're always bouncing around doing something wacky. Yeah, uh, right now I'm actually going on an adventure. I'm shouting out Skokie, Illinois. Oh no! Let's, let's hear it for Skokie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hear it. Uh, that's quite an adventure. That uh, that shout out. Yeah. Aside from that. My most recent adventure was uh, <clears throat> watching the Fisher King. Oh yes, uh, Terry Gilliam Fisher King. Uh, how was that? It was uh, quite adventurous. Uh, I don't know if uh, I can't really tell you too much about it without spoiling it. But oh yeah, yeah, no spoilers. But let's get the uh, the basic run of the the episode. So basically, it's. It actually confirmed some supernatural stuff. What the act the act of watching it, it con- confirmed a lot of supernatural stuff to me. What, how like do you the mean? power of uh, the power of serendipity. It manifested itself in my experience because uh, remember how we were talking about how uh, Tom Waits uh, was uh, kind of a nerd. I I was not. Uh... No, uh, no, I don't. What about it? Oh well, uh, I was I was thinking about how Tom Waits seems like the one kind of like pop musician that, like, I can imagine Fraser Crane would uh, listen to <laughs> to let his hair down. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine uh, Fraser Crane listening to Tom Waits? Uh, yeah, maybe. Um, maybe, maybe, yeah. Yeah, he, you know, he'll probably compare it to, you know, he, he would think of it as like he'd, uh, he'd like to uh, compare it as like, like opera or something, and he'd think that it's like something actual, like winos and stuff, listen to. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah, maybe. Uh, he he was, uh, I don't know, kind of kind of portrayed as uh, uh, an elitist in in an aloof way, not not in a. Not in an unkind way, but uh, yeah, uh, you know those toss salad, scrambled eggs. Yeah. Well, anyways, I was thinking about how, uh, you know how each episode of Frasier has like a celebrity caller. Uh, I think so. Was it like was usually that like usually at the beginning of the show he's on his radio show and they have like like a calling guest for his show and a lot of times it's a celebrity. Oh, uh, you know that, uh, 
I'll take your word for it. I I, I haven't seen an episode of Frasier in a, in a while now. I it's remember been like, the call what, two in two weeks. At, at least two weeks. Yeah, I I remember yeah. the call in thing. He had a show and people would call it, but I don't recall uh, celebrities. But uh, but what of it? Yeah, I was thinking that Tom Waits, if he uh, he, he seems like the perfect uh, guest to have to do one of those uh, call in segments, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah that'd I be, mean, that'd be fun. Yeah, um, I, I, although I'm not sure if he actually, I wouldn't be surprised if it was something he's actually done, though. You know, I, I don't know. I've uh, read, uh, uh, I, I, apart from being fairly uh, familiar with at least some of his music, I've, I've read uh, um, some uh, lawsuits uh, that, that he's been involved in, letters uh, that... Uh, uh, where, where he's he's airing the the uh, the grievance and he uh, uses very colorful language and then then that uh, cigarettes and coffee I remember it was uh, it was it was kind of that way or or interviews or uh, uh, he has uh, segments I think I think it's uh, oh I, I think it's glitter and doom I think uh, a, a, a live album uh, where he has uh, uh, a bit where he talks about and he, he he does kind of i don't know weird he, he he's he's weird to to listen to when he just speaks that's that's the that's the point of that anecdote i uh brought up well he's he's a professional actor i mean he they they don't like just uh they don't have they don't bring those celebrities on that show and then have them like uh talk candidly they follow a script yeah yeah uh, well he does uh he does strange uh things I, like I, I don't know a lot of the motivations but uh, he's not a not a real direct he he kind of kind of talks around in in fanciful uh language at least sometimes um or at least he's known for doing that it it, it could all be planned and scripted what do i know uh well he, I'm, I'm guessing he did that he started speaking that way you know thanks to an image consultant i I don't know. I'm pretty sure the record label, they sent an image consultant down to him. They're like, "Hey, uh, you're not, your music's not going to sell unless you uh, talk like a madman," you know? Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I know uh, you would know something about that, uh, having having a uh, experience in image uh, consulting. Um, I, I mean, how would you uh, advise Tom Waits to speak so he would have? Uh, have a public persona that people would feel drawn to. You know, it's a cool public persona is someone who never speaks in public, like uh, Teller Schoen. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if Tom Waits just stop talking in public, that would be pretty cool. Well, I, I yeah, I will. You know, maybe maybe they could uh, maybe they could team up if uh, <laughs> if uh, if uh, T- Teller gets into uh, music or. Uh, Waits gets into magic, you know. It would be, it would be uh, nice to see a Waits and uh, Teller uh, the, duo. Yeah, that'd actually be pretty cool. Uh, what was it? it like uh, th- that'd be a re- really good stage show, you know? Because uh, Teller Schumann, I think he's like the artist of the Penn and Teller du- uh, duo, you know, when it comes to magic. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I'd, I'd watch it. They. It, they they could uh, just do a thing and and uh, like Tom Waits could do like a normal concert and uh, Teller could just sort of stand there and 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 they could call it Waits and Teller or something like that you know I'd I'd uh, uh, go in for that yeah why not no like Teller Schumann who wouldn't just stand there he'd do like magic the whole time yeah yeah well yeah I suppose yeah yeah. Yeah, magic. He could do magic, uh, and you know, Tom Waits might say something about the magic. I could see him <laughs> mentioning magic that he's witnessing, sleight of hand and traps and such. Yeah, well, you know, I, I'll, I'll I'll probably see that. Yeah, yeah, I I I think you probably won't, but I'd I'd watch it. I I think that'd be a good show. I uh, I think I think it'd be fun to sit down in. Uh, in kind of a smoky old lounge with uh with a, a drink followed by other uh drinks 
uh, and uh, watch that sort of performance where Tom Waits does some stuff and then Teller does some stuff and then uh, that's the show. That, that there's a show. That's that's the show. I'd I'd go I'd go to that show. Uh, that show would be too big to be in a smoky lounge. With that, their combined star power, they'll at least uh, fill out like Wembley Stadium or something. They could do a little impromptu thing. Uh, like uh, I, I I think Tom Waits has done a fair amount of uh, jazz lounge type places, and uh, Teller could just sort of show up uh, unannounced. And <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it'd be it'd be a nice surprise, really. Yeah, that that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, it would be pretty funny. Is if uh, Tom Waits uh, shows up to a Teller Schumann show and is like hops on stage, thinking this celebrity you give him license to uh, just start like playing his music. Oh yeah, that that'd be <laughs> that'd be pretty interesting. I don't I don't really get the sense that uh, Tom Waits <laughs> is is about to like push anybody out of the way uh, so he can be featured. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I don't know him. It, I just yeah. It's not, not not really an impression I've gotten, but it would be uh it would be quite uh an interesting story were that to happen. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably more of a Penn Jillette thing. I bet he he would probably do that. Yeah, yeah. I I, I actually think he might. Um yeah, there, there are some celebrities that would go out and take the stage and try and make it about them. The Oh, what the 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 award shows? Uh, Chris Rock getting slapped, or Kanye West uh, talking about um, Beyonce, or I don't know. They 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 do that, right? Yes. Yep. That's uh. That's always fun when it happens. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Only reason to watch an awards show, in my opinion. Uh, I mean. All right, all right, all right. So, like, you watch an award show. That's your reason. It's probably not going to happen, and you still have to watch the whole award show. So, I don't think it's a reason to watch the award show. I think, I think there's there's really no good reason to uh, watch one of the major award shows. Uh, I think the only reason you should watch an award show is if you're related to someone who might get an award. You know. Yeah, I mean, if if uh, I don't know a musician I liked was up for a Grammy or something, I probably would not watch the Grammys. I, uh, I, I don't want to sit through that. Well, I mean, if your cousin was up for best makeup, would you watch through that? Watch it then? Uh, I I don't know. I'm not really close with any cousins. best sound design. Yeah, I I I, I don't know. I, I I don't really know any 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 cousins very well um what if your neighbor is up for uh best uh hard rock heavy metal album i i uh i don't know if i if i happen to run into the neighbor i'd say hey way to be <laughs> bud but uh, I, like i i have kind of a kind of a uh, uh fences make good neighbors philosophy with uh neighbors i i don't uh ever go out of my way to interact with a neighbor i see well yeah. uh which brings me to my uh uh was it neighboring point oh yeah. next point uh yeah yeah i knew this so, was coming yeah so i you know who i but you know you know who was it in that movie the fisher king uh yeah you, you told me a couple names so so yeah, a, a little bit so there was tom waits he was in it but the thing that brings us all together is serendipity. Yeah. David Hyde, Hyde Pierce. Oh, don't. T- oh, yes. Uh, Niles I, Crane. I yeah. What? Yeah. Niles Crane. Oh, that's that's not who who came to mind at all. Yep. Yeah, of, co- of course, that's that's David. Niles. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. That that really, really brings it full circle. Makes you think. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like. Uh, it was like the universe knew I was thinking about that connection and they, and they connected oh, yeah. it in that movie. Yeah, serendipity. That's what, that's what you're talking about. It's a uh, real, uh, what, uh, synchronicity, synchnocratic? Would it be synchnocratic? I, I don't know. 
I, I hope I'll, so. I'll have those uh, fancy vocabulary. I yeah, I'll have to I'll have to look at uh, at my flashcards. <laughs> uh, uh, well, well done. You've uh, you've 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 tapped into something uh, something cosmic. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a great way to put it. Oh sure, yeah, it's the best way to put it. I I I like Terry Gilliam movies, but I have not seen uh, all of them. Uh, I have not seen Fisher King. Uh, it's a good one. Yeah, I, I, I imagine it is. Uh, so you know, I'll have to see it at some point. Yeah, Jeff Bridges is in it. Oh, good. Uh, didn't you say Robin Williams is in it? Robin Williams. Yep, he plays the uh, homeless man. Oh my. Well, uh, you know, I I like seeing him and stuff. Yeah, uh, Jeff Bridges plays a uh, radio shock jock, kind of like uh, Howard Stern. Oh, that's that's so like Jeff Bridges. Yep. So. Yeah. Well. And, that, that, you yep. Go, what would you say? Oh no, I was I was about to split off into a, a, a totally separate uh, issue. Uh, so oh. please, by all Is means. The, that's all right. Uh, you can go ahead. What's the issue? Is it David Hyde Pierce? Oh no. Uh, yeah, I, I like him just fine. Uh, no, I, I was I was going to say that uh, I likewise uh, watched a a film. Uh, it was uh, Dark Horse, uh, Todd Salon's Dark Horse, and uh, I had not seen that one. Oh, Jordan Gilbert, Christopher Walken, Selma Blair. You know it, yeah, yeah. That's the one. This was the the first time I watched it, and. Uh, uh it was it was really awkward um but uh i mean he's he's kind of kind of known for that uh like uh like uh, what happiness and uh oh gosh what, what, storytelling i haven't seen storytelling um what what's the one where uh it's like uh don wiener's niece and it's played by a whole bunch of different uh people playing that one little girl Oh yeah, I saw that one. Uh, that was like uh, that was a, one of his newer ones, right? Like uh, where it was a Kieran Culkin, isn't it, or something? I I, I don't know actor name. Oh no, but... that's Wiener Dog. I was thinking of. Uh, uh, no, no, I haven't seen Wiener Dog. Um, uh, palindromes. I, palindromes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Palindromes. Uh, uh, had some really uncomfortable uh moments um uh let's see, i did welcome to the doll house that that was a, that was a little cringy uh oh yeah like i, I it's 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 always really well done but it's it's awkward as hell and the uh, dark horse was just uh green with it it was uh yeah it was uh it was it was uh is it interesting uh movie yeah it's yeah. probably his least cringy movie out there it you know it very well could be um but it just it just uh you know highest recommendations in that but it didn't leave uh like like i i, I get that uh kind of the way that it's portrayed and uh kind of demonstrating um oh this Oh, this waiting, or oh, the, all, all these things that you're doing to uh, try to get around living a life, or doing instead of living a life. Um, like time is passing, you're choosing not to live, and uh, then, you know, that's that's uh, you, you know, it, it, it's kind of a message like that, and uh, and in a way, it's it's kind of hopeful. Um, not 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 the events within the movie there. They're not hopeful, but the uh, the the kind of the, the statement of it uh, uh, is sort of a like a like a call to action, a uh, uh, the like uh, like like Shia LaBeouf yelling "Do it" in front of a green screen, you know? Oh yeah, is that like from uh, Transformers? Uh yeah, maybe. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think it was a. Uh, I think I think it was one of those memes. Uh, he uh, yelled, "Do it!" in front of a a green screen, 
and uh, people put that in videos for a while. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. I guess it was a uh, performance art. Oh, sure. Yeah, he he does he does a little of that. Yeah. Yeah. But what was a uh, dark horse about? Like, tell tell me the story. Well, help me recap it. Don't worry about spoiling it for the listeners. You know, they got fair warning. No, no, I, I I'll give uh, I'll give a basic thing because you know I I don't want to spoil it. I I, I have uh, back in the days when I would actually like show films to people as opposed to uh, watching them alone. Uh, uh, I would like to expose people to uh, to uh, uh, that the handful of Todd Salon's movies that that I I knew. That, that there are a few uh, movies uh, directors uh, is, is, that I would like to have them watch and uh, just sort of be startled by. Um, and uh, anyway, so I don't I don't want to give the the, the full here's what happens at the very end. But the basic idea is that you've got a uh, grown uh, man, uh, uh, middle thirties, who's uh, uh, overweight. Um, uh, he's, uh, uh, he's only employed uh, because he works for his father's company. He's, he's very uh, quick to uh, talk up himself and to put down others um and he's just um and he 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 gets on with uh well he doesn't get on but he meets a woman at a um uh a wedding and uh you know he's he's just got his misadventures and and you get uh you get you know through him that he kind of gets that he's uh stepping out of life he kind of gets that everything that he's saying and doing is, is inappropriate. Um, and he kind of gets that the investment in collectibles is, uh, is really just, I don't know, kind of, kind of like dealing with a, with an absence of, of culture and connection instead of, uh, it, you know, just, just paying into this, uh, um, I, I don't know, this, this, this shallow hobby of, spending money based on uh items that exist not to serve a purpose but just to get people to buy them um that he, like he kind of gets it but it's it's only shown that he gets it in uh, in a roundabout way but uh uh that's that's dark horse in a nutshell i'm sure that made sense to everybody without exception um well, yeah. i'm the exception that proves the rule well, there you go. Everybody else followed me uh, totally. I I made sense. I was succinct and direct. So uh, you're welcome for that. You know. All right. Well, you know, this is a radio history we're witnessing here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The the most uh, direct, obvious statement made by a a uh, human uh, ever. No, not a human. A broadcaster. A broadcaster. I'm not human. I'm a broadcaster. That's exactly yeah. right. That's exactly right. You know. Uh, well, uh, let's see. Do, do you have any dark horse input? No, it's been so long since I watched that film. Okay. Uh, was it? I think like uh, his it was a Christopher Walken plays his dad, right? Yeah. Um and how was that performance? Was oh, it very uh, uh, Walken esque? Uh, yeah, no, he was just sort of uh, a. Uh, I mean, he wasn't he wasn't particularly uh, an engaged and happy individual. He was sort of checked out. This is my life. This is the way it is. And it was clear that, uh, uh, like, like he wasn't happy. In, in his uh, marriage, the work seemed kind of blah. He was just sort of holding it together. And uh, uh, he kind of, like, I, I, I don't know. He, there, there was, there was it, it, it always seemed to me that uh, he was kind of 
I don't know, hating at his son and and holding it in behind his eyes. He, he just he just he just seemed like somebody who was over it, didn't want to be there anymore. Yeah. Did, did did you, the what? Oh yeah. Did he do, did he do any like dancing at all? Because he dances in every movie. He he didn't dance. He didn't do the uh, jilted uh, uh, way of speaking that uh, that one associates. It, it, it was none of the the walk and stuff. Like he did a he did a good job. He's he's good at what he does, but uh, he was just playing a beaten down guy uh, who was just tired of it all. That's that's kind of what it was. Uh, I see, just like myself. Oh, just like just like all of us at a point, um, or or not, you know, may, maybe not. Who knows? Uh, I I uh, I think we have to take a a quick break, uh, but uh, we'll be back for more of this magic uh, very soon. How do, how do you feel about that, George? Went well. All right. So now, now we can be, now we can be back because we weren't back before, but we are, we're back now. I mean, we were, we were here already and we were back before the break, but now we're, we're back again. Yeah. We're, that was a, that was a fun recess. Yeah. 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 It was uh, lots of fun. Uh, uh, what, what'd you do in your, your break? Played some kickball some jacks uh, wow yeah i just i just sat here with my eyes closed and thought about uh life in the world <laughs> yeah your head on <laughs> with your head on your uh on the table uh no I, I i didn't have the energy to put my head down <laughs> i see <laughs> uh Oh uh, yeah, you gotta conserve it for uh for this uh half of the show. You oh yeah, carry all the content. Yeah, this this is this is gonna be uh, quite quite a an effort. Uh, this this next one here, you know. All right. Yeah. So, uh, th- did our viewers give us any send us any mail or send uh any questions? Uh, it, you know, all it's the mail time. It's that time of the show. Yeah, it's it it is. It's time for mail, and uh, uh, we we just got a, a lot of warm wishes, which are uh, very welcome, but uh, difficult to respond to beyond uh, sending them back. So, warm wishes to you, viewer, listener, and uh, 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 sleeper that dreams us all into existence. Yeah. Yep, warm wishes to all those folks out there. Yeah, 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 warm. I I want all the folks listening in their cars to uh, like honk their horn and you know solidarity with with the show. Oh, uh, and I want you to not honk your horn in solidarity with the show out of politeness for your fellow uh, commuters. Well, we're trying. To, it's it's actually a great way for us to uh, uh, raise awareness. Imagine if everyone's listening to this live at the same time. Yeah. And uh, I tell everyone to uh, lay into their horns. Imagine like how loud the sound you could hear across the whole country. It would probably be, be unprecedented that amount of sound. Yeah. This, this is like uh, hands across America. This is this is quite yeah. a, quite, quite a spin on uh, the uh, collective human experience. Well done, George. Yeah, that that's a uh, that's our big project. Uh yeah, that uh, all right. Honk, honk across the homeland. Honk, 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 honk you guy. Don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, how, I think you should just uh, 
smile silently with your <laughs> eyes unfocused. Not if you're driving. Uh, eyes unfocused. and just With your hand it. pressing the, the horn. No. <laughs> no. No, not if not both if hands, guys. both hands, both hands pushing it out of the horn. No, no, <laughs> no, G- gentle quiet. That that is uh, that's the fun, that's the that's the real party. The real uh, the real podcast was the gentle quiet we made along the way. Uh, if, if uh, our, we kind of have a raucous and body uh, program right here. Oh yeah, yeah. Our, our image is like we're like the party animal of the uh, podcasts and the media landscape. Well, yeah, yeah. Which, which, which is why it should be uh, consumed responsibly, yeah. uh, with uh, deliberate uh, uh, peace. Yeah, you know, what? I I like to make a a, uh, a a suggestion, maybe a request from our view from our viewers. Oh my, let's let yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so next time you get you go to a party, what you can do is like go to the music system and just put our podcast on. Oh my! Now, hey, now that's an idea. That would be a great idea, don't you think? Like, uh, it's it would be like uh, upping the party atmosphere to ten. You know, oh, sure. it's basically you're putting like a, this pod this podcast is basically a party, right? Oh, and you're yeah. putting. And then you putting that on top of an actual party, it can like kind of multiply the uh, festivity of the event, you know? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, totally. Um, and uh, you know, start bugging us about uh, producing merchandise. <laughs> yeah, we should do uh, like shot glasses, shot glasses, t-shirts, baseball hat, underpants, socks, uh, shoes, dolls, uh, uh, yard signs. Uh, yard uh, sticks. Do what? Yard sticks. Yard sticks. Yard sticks for miles. Uh, it, it, if there is enough of a of a fan clamor behind it, uh, we'll have somebody produce a mile stick. How do you like that? A mile stick. That's uh not bad. Yeah. No. I mean, I imagine the. Uh, I mean, I imagine the price would be quite high on something like that. Uh, how how many uh, m- uh, yards are in a mile? Oh, I I don't know. Uh, I off the top of my head, I don't know how many feet are in a mile, so I couldn't tell you. But uh, it uh, it it'd be a few. Uh, and uh, I'm looking it up right now. Oh, because we can his, actually calculate it. You know, and he's got he's got a. Uh, it's the chip in his head, folks. He's got a yes. chip in his head. <laughs> the eyes are lighting up and lights are going back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to read all the terms and conditions when uh, you buy an iPhone. Yeah, you know, so so there's 1,760 yards in a mile. Oh, my goodness. Well, so how many, uh, how much does a yardstick cost? Let's see. Yardstick from, let's see, the closest store. For shopping this is all in my head like i know yeah. i just know the prices yeah yeah it, it, it's he's going into a trance yep like uh yeah there's like the lights are blinking you know yeah yeah this is this is disturbing <laughs> okay how much would you Somebody pay for a yardstick a you what how much would you pay for a yardstick oh uh eighty dollars eighty dollars yeah so <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> the uh, cheap, cheapest one I can think of is like about like seven bucks. Yeah. However, uh, let's say let's say it's like let's say you got like uh let's say it's like five times seventeen sixty. Let's say you got like a discount since you're buying so much. Yeah. So let's say it's a uh, five dollars for a yardstick times seventeen sixty. How much is that? You know, you know the math, right? Uh yeah yeah uh why don't you tell us uh let's see I'm gonna carry the one at the nine and you got so eighty eight hundred dollars yeah well I would be let's surprised. say nine grand let's say you you can expect to pay nine grand 
to buy a bunch of 1,760 meters and make them into one mile stick? Well, no, I, I mean, I think I think we would want to have it manufactured <clears throat> as one uh, continuous piece, one solid mile stick. That's not that's not going to happen. No, I I I mean, it'd be difficult. But if you're using uh, like wood uh, made out of like the, the the particle wood pulp or something, uh, like it it doesn't have to be all one piece of wood from a tree. Or it could be some kind of pressed yeah. synthetic. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know how we would do that. I don't know who would do that. And it's, uh, it's got to have a little, little flat uh, uh, bit along the side. You know how rulers will have. You know this wouldn't be metal. That would be, that would be insane. But you, you know they'll have a, have a flat piece of metal on one side. Um, I I don't know how we would go about it. Well, you know what? You know what's actually the uh, most difficult part about having a mile stick is keeping uh, it on your property. Well, no, I, I, I don't know what you could do with it. I, it would snap under its own <laughs> weight if you tried to turn it up. Yes, and, and you'd and... probably be breaking uh, breaking some kind of a kind of a law about uh, you know sticking things up uh, in the sky. You know, and yeah, exactly. You know, like uh, planes don't go that high, you know. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe it could be donated to a park or something. I guess you have to put it, like right in the middle of uh, uh, some like abandoned national park. I'd be fine. With, like, with a that. Mi- yeah, you need like a mile, square mile of clear space across, like around, you know. Yeah. Just to keep, you know, like there's no way like you can like ha- lay down a mile stick. It's not gonna like hit rocks or whatever you know uh i or mean trees we blocked by trees yeah yeah i um i i bet we could have it made out of a material where if it's laying flat it wouldn't snap under its own weight but uh you know i i don't know where you'd put it i i i think uh i i don't know i i don't know how we would possibly ship it or deliver it to to anybody i i don't i don't know how (laughs) how we could possibly do that but i i would be willing to bet that uh, we could have it made if we were uh uh, funded and energized to do it like a a a stick that was a mile long i bet i bet it could could be done um no it seems impossible nothing's impossible all right uh that is impossible. No, no. If if uh, there is enough uh, fan motivation and uh, and uh, financial backing, we could make a, uh, a mile stick. That'd probably take like a hundred million dollars. I hope not. But, uh, At least. Well, I just I so for a, a just for like a like a shop that can accommodate making a mile one thing that's a mile yeah how you know how long that shop would have to be at least a mile <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly you know it's a mile long factory you know i i uh... like imagine, imagine like a warehouse that's a mile you know long you know at least yeah, yeah. i don't think there's, there's ever been a warehouse that big uh i i i I have faith in uh, the mile stick. I think it is uh, within the capacity of human ingenuity. I don't. I don't know how how quality it would be, um, and and perhaps uh, perhaps it, it would have to begin like like you mentioned, uh, uh, creating a bunch of uh, yardsticks and and uh, putting them together. Uh, I don't know about that. But I could see that could happen. Well, I, well, that could that, happen. even that's hard. Even that's hard. Well, yeah, yeah. But if if you had like a place to feed it out to, like let's say, let's say it's part of some charity project and it's being taken in by uh, a park or something, and uh, the manufacturing process is sort of like you print out a length of the thing and then kind of press it into and smooth it out so it becomes one piece with the next piece that's being made 
and then you just sort of run it down or you yourself run down as you're, you're doing it. I think you could make it uh, where it has to be. I think you could do that. Yeah. I get, you know, you, can, you might as well just like hand carve each foot of the uh, mile stick. Well, I, I don't know about that. I, well, you, you know, maybe, uh, maybe one would have to uh, have to etch it out or paint it or draw it as it's being created because it's not just a, it's not just like a stick that uh, stretches out a mile. It has to have notches on it um, that use the, um, use the standard measurement so so this this thing would be counted out in inches yep you know you know you know at this point it's so impractical it's 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 almost more practical now to just make it on the moon where there's plenty of like space to hold it and you know make oh it. no no not yeah, the you moon. might as well just get make like a get a huge warehouse on the moon and just make it there it's like almost at that that's almost more practical than how you do it on earth i i okay imagine imagine this right imagine some smiling stone statue it could be crude of uh of the uh of the players the uh the podcast terrible players uh just grinning uh benevolent uh, benevolently into the the void i don't know and then uh, it, it's in some kind of a park someplace right and uh, stretched out along a walking path that goes straight is a uh, mile stick it could be done for for charity or something like that if you, if you tied it to to some uh uh irrefutably good deed you know we'd we'd be heroes zero to hero just like uh just like that movie, it'd be uh, it'd be a, a miracle. Like that guy, Christo. Like Christo, yeah. Like what? What did he do in Central Park? He like hung garbage bags or something. I don't. I don't know who this is. I don't know who Christo is. Oh, he's he was like this performance artist who did installations in like Central Park. Oh, and they're like, oh. you know, like putting blankets on stuff or something. Yeah, yeah, but what if it were, instead of a blanket, it was a a mile stick? A mile stick. It's uh, you know, they say it can't be done. Yeah, let's prove and them that's wrong. Like, oh yeah, you know, no, it actually be a great piece of merchandise. So, a rolled up mile, uh, mile uh, tape measure kind of thing. It's like tape measure, but it's a mile long. Okay. Uh, you could probably carry that, you know, if you have a thin enough material. You know, you know, we could actually market and sell that one. I think the other, I think the mile stick would have to be a uh, charity thing. Uh, but you could, you could ship a mile tape roller. It, it'd just be. I, I, I don't know. It's, it seems like that sort of thing would be dangerous. Like, like imagine you, oh, yeah. you pull the thing out a mile, right? Yeah. And then you let go. And it just goes back. It, it could, it could take somebody's leg off. That's true. Well, you, you could do it like a, a spool the paper ones. You, you ever seen the the? Yeah, the that's what I'm cloth? thinking. Like, yeah, I'm thinking like a spool of paper, like a paper strip that's a, a mile long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that sort of cloth thing. I I think we could put put that in. It's it's not the it's not the fabled uh, mile stick, which uh, you know someday someday. But uh, mild tape. Yeah, mild tape. That'd yeah. be pretty cool, I guess. <laughs> yeah, imagine <laughs> like uh, imagine carrying that around with you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be, you'd be the life of the party. You'd be the, the exactly. bell of the ball. That people would gather around you and lift you up onto their shoulders and cheer. You know. Oh yes. Uh, and plus, uh, our uh, our program will be playing in the background. Oh, sir. Uh, well, yeah, that's a good like, one of our many listeners would have like long ago hijacked the stereo and plugged his phone in to broadcast our program. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that uh, that can happen. Yeah. So, but yeah, like uh, that 
yeah, I can I can imagine like make like like a, like a it would be a great hiking accessory. It'd be like a game. Yeah, know? well, like like okay, just just imagine if uh, Hansel and Gretel had had one of those, they wouldn't have been uh, <laughs> captured by that. Uh... Yeah, let's see. That witch. Yeah, they're, no, they they probably still would have been. Well, I I don't know. Isn't isn't the thing they put down the breadcrumbs and birds eat them so they can't find their way back? Uh. I think so. Yeah, yeah. So, don't be like Hansel and Gretel, you guys. Buy the, buy the patented, uh, podcast mild tape. Terrible mild tape. Uh, the the only podcast terrible approved mild tape. Uh, unless yeah, somebody wants pl- to sponsor us for theirs. <laughs> yeah, I got like there's a game you can play with it. Is like uh, so one person holds one end and another person holds the other end, right? Yeah. And then one person goes ahead at the uh, and then just keeps walking until they uh, stretch out the whole mile tape. And that's the game. And then the uh, the uh, person at the other end, they uh, when when the uh, mile tape like gets, you know, it's when it's finished, they like uh, walk towards the other person and that keeps on going. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, that'd be fun. I mean, there could be a little, uh, a little uh, lever on the side of it, so you can roll it back up. So they could unspool the entire thing, and then roll it back up. Exactly. Yeah. That's how. Yeah, that's how. That's that's kind of part of the game. Like, once you stretch it out, the other person uh, rolls it back up. Yeah. And then you... Another, per- and then the next person rolls it back out a mile, and then the second person rolls it back up. Yeah, yeah, you could uh, uh, take go to the middle of the ocean and put a weight on it and uh, drop it in the ocean. Yeah, you probably met, you're probably uh, breaking some laws though there. Yeah, don't. Yeah, and you'll get caught in like fishing traps and all that sort of stuff. Well, uh, I I take it back. Uh, our our resident uh, legal uh, uh, eagle. Uh, George here says not to do it. Yeah, I, I've watched the episode of the Practice, so I should know. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's about all you need. Uh, well, uh, uh, what what's been up in your life this past uh, few, however, however real the the time your time. Anything good? That- no, like uh, I've just been waiting here for like the next uh, call to duty. Well, that's what that that was. <laughs> yeah, I, I was. I, I thought sitting... I thought some milk turned or something. No, I was just uh, sitting here waiting for my, you know for you to call and and you know uh, request my services at this podcast. Yeah, well, yeah, I I may have a a little tale if uh, if if you won't, won't wouldn't mind you know a little tale. Oh. I'd love it. All right. So the other day, uh, I I go to the grocery store, and uh, I didn't I didn't spot one of those little hand baskets that uh, allow you to just go and put in the stuff. And I just had a few things, and the store was fairly busy. And uh, I don't like to get a full shopping cart uh, when I go into the the grocery store if I don't have to, because you're always waiting for people. There's not really clear uh, lines of traffic most of the time, and you're just an obstruction, and it takes uh, a trip uh, and uh, triples it. it. It takes much longer to do that. So I couldn't find one of those little baskets, and what I do is there's an empty uh, register, and by them they've got those paper uh, bags uh, uh, for the checkout, and I grab one of those, and so I go through the store, and I fill the paper bag. And uh, it it gets kind of torn up moving through the store, but it works. And I'm able to quickly navigate the store. Success. It works out. So I, I at the end of the trip, I go to the self-checkout spot because um, there aren't many things there. That's where the line's shortest. And I don't really want to have a, an extended interaction. I just wanted to pay for my stuff and leave. And so I go there and I take the stuff out of this torn up bag that I've been using, scan it, put it into a new bag, 
and pay for it. And I didn't see a trash can. Uh, and I just wanted to get out. So this bag, empty, destroyed. It's uh, in, in, in ribbons. I ball it up, shove it under my shoulder uh, or under my arm. Not, not yeah but and i hustle out of the store and there's uh there's a woman who is uh uh in attendant over these self checkout uh registers and uh she gives me an extremely stern look and i i don't look her right in the face but you know just sort of a, a side glance thing as i hurry up and give one of those uh, not really a smile, but uh, the the things you do. A smirk? Uh, the, no, no, not a smirk. <laughs> no, it's it's, it's 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 the placid, almost a smile thing that you do. Uh, I don't know to be polite to uh, uh, yes. let people know I'm not a threat or uh, I see let's, you. I see you. Let's not be uncomfortable. It, it's short of a friendly exchange, even a basic friendly exchange. But it's just sort of a common gesture. And I give one yeah. of those and I hustle up. And since that point, uh, I've been unable to get out of my head because uh, because she obviously thought, and this this is a reasonable concern. I didn't do it. I don't shoplift. I don't. But uh, uh, it would be reasonable to suspect somebody of doing it in that lane, in the self-checkout lane. I didn't think as I was uh, on the way out, I didn't think to stop and, I don't know, tear out up the bag a little bit more or pull out the receipt and, and count out all this stuff or empty my pockets or take off my shoes. I didn't think that. I just <laughs> thought I'm on my way out. I'm, I'm going out. But since that point, and I should, I should have, if I should have thought of it, I should have just, here's all the stuff on my person. And here's a, here's a neat list to show that I just paid for all of it. Um, and so now, uh I've, I've harbored a concern like uh were my mannerisms and appearance uh noteworthy enough to be remembered uh, uh after after being suspected of that or uh does she see so many people that i'm totally forgotten uh does is, is if i go there am i going to be put in a situation where i'm having to have a conversation with somebody who doesn't believe me draw more attention of myself possibly identify myself and possibly um uh, encourage um i don't know somebody to to get law enforcement or, or ban huh. me from the premises uh do i just go there and pretend it didn't happen and they remember me and i'm flagged and then at the end of the store somebody says uh, sir will you come with me and then nobody believes me uh <laughs> or or they pocket the receipt or they just throw it away and they say hey she said this, her word against yours, you are automatically a criminal. Or or do I just like allow anxieties to stop me from going to that store altogether? And uh, it seems like uh, a collection of bads to choose from. Like what's the what is the reasonable normal adult adult course of action if you found yourself in that situation? Somebody gives oh. you a look, oh, you stole something. You think you're getting away with it. I didn't steal anything, but she thinks I did. Like, what is the rational uh, behavior? What's the reasonable thing to do after that? Yeah, you know, she probably might not have. She she may have given you that look, not because she thought you were stealing. Uh, Maybe she just disapproves of you, uh, of that of the type of guy you are in general. <laughs> you know, maybe it's like some sort of prejudice thing. You know. Uh, you know, maybe there's something about you that she doesn't like. I, like, I oh, am, that guy wearing his jeans. Yeah, you know, if if there wasn't, then there is now. But uh, I'm I'm certainly open to the possibility that I was I was typecast. I mean, if if I had been, uh, I don't know, like like obviously of a of a demographic who wouldn't <laughs> uh, need to to do that, like like. Uh, Mr. Moneybags, I'm I'm there, you, yeah. you know, monocle and top hat and stuff, and I just shove uh, uh, the shopping bag under my arm and walk out. You know, nobody's going to look at that. I mean, they might. Those, those are the people who would steal the most. But uh, I mean, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. There, there was something. Maybe, 
or maybe she's just having a bad day, or she was looking at someone else. It was a, uh, it was a glare at me. It was a bright glare, you know. Uh, mm. She was looking at me. I just, mm. I just like is, is it more rational to try and engage her in conversation? But she may have forgotten it, or it might she, draw more. She most attention. likely forgot it. Yep, might have forgotten. Um, she, she, or it might do more to identify me and encourage more uh, involvement that could uh, possibly uh, have a ban or or some kind yeah. of prosecution. Uh, it might. Um, oh, I, I, like like. Well, there's no chance she'd believe me. Like like if if somebody thinks you stole something and you say, "Hey, I didn't steal," and they work there and they see people steal and they know it happens. Like people just observe a thing and make their minds up. You can't say, hey, I didn't. The time to do that would have been right then and there. You know, she suspects. Oh, I'll clear that up immediately. That didn't come to mind. It was it was leave and carry on with my day. That's what came to mind. That's what I was doing. Well, in the future, the most reasonable thing to do would be to just go to the store and pretend nothing happened. You didn't really like from your story. You didn't do anything suspicious. You just I, transferred items from one bag to another, and both yeah. bags are free, right? Uh, yeah, they're, they're they're the shopping bags they have at the store. I just used one for uh, a little hand basket because I I couldn't find a hand basket. So, like, uh, would it be more suspicious if you just put your stuff in that like? In that bag, the shopping bag you got at the beginning of the trip, and then at the end, just walk past the uh, one of the thief just walk past the self checkout, and then you know say, uh, and then like you know pretend he already paid for it. I don't know. I, like uh... like what kind of, like a thief would like put stuff in a bag, then take it to the self checkout, ch- take it out of that bag, scan it, and put it back in a, in a fresh bag. Like, I. I, I don't know. I see, I see. I I imagine a lot of those places have cameras on you all the time. I imagine yeah. a lot of them don't. Um, well, I, they I, have cameras. They definitely have cameras at the self checkout. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, right in like it's like six inches in front of your face. They 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 very well may have. I, they didn't have one of those. Uh, here's your image image back at you. So so if they did or they but, didn't, I don't know about they, it. They they most likely did, even without that. Yeah. Uh, but, thing. But they all do like, like ATMs. Yeah, well, ATM absolutely would. Uh, you, got, you got cash, you've got uh, uh, a risk of, of a robbery. Uh, somebody could get uh, mugged right then and there. Um, I, I don't know. I like it, it may or may not have, but uh, like, I, I, I don't know. Like, like, I, I, I don't know. So, like, like, you go through these stores. You, would somebody just slip a thing in their pocket but then you know you don't know where the cameras are uh would somebody uh like if if you got your stuff there and and you put it at the end uh could could like she looking at me she could have reasonably thought uh he's got this bag filled with stuff how do i know that this torn bag doesn't have something else in it that he didn't check out and he just didn't want to pay for it, so he balls it up and puts it under his arm like like how would she know uh, that there wasn't something else in the bag. It it seems like a reasonable suspicion to me. I guess, but uh, you know, it's. I guess she, she was like angry that you used the bag instead of a hand basket. Maybe she thought, you know, maybe she's like, you thought you were being wasteful. She's like, there's hand baskets. Why waste the bag? Why waste the bag? You know. I don't know if there there were hand baskets. I didn't I didn't see a hand. She basket. probably thought there were. I don't, I don't know, but uh, I like, like, uh, sure, it's it's wasteful to take two paper bags when you could use one, I guess. But yeah, but I, I think, I think the assumption was, oh, he's stealing something, he's hustling out, he's not looking side to side. I, I, I don't know, he's not doing the, yeah. the, like, like I, I was, I was closed in. I'm walking quickly out. I'm not looking anybody in the eye. I'm not. Uh, yeah. That's, I, I mean, 
I very well could have looked suspicious. Do people just grab a thing and then not looking anybody at anybody just quickly hustle out the door uh, before somebody stops them? I didn't I didn't take off running. I'd clearly bought a bunch of stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, are you are you, so you're, you are going to go back, right? And then nothing happens just because nothing did happen. No, well, nothing did happen, but then it's my word against somebody else's. And uh, if they remember me, I could get what you have from to do is, worse. what you have to do is just start uh, bringing up your food on the checkout line, like with a human being. That, that way, is, each time they correct. know, that way they can see that you're not stealing. No, I, I mean, as far as like do right that a then few and times there, at least. Yeah, no, I, I, what, what I. Like the only reasonable course of action would be to uh, continue going there um, to uh, no longer use the self checkout line. And if confronted, just kind of demonstrate that I haven't stolen anything. I, I don't know what else I could possibly do. But like if somebody were to like, I remember you, uh, you stolen something this time right now because I thought you did it last time. I could prove right then that I hadn't. Um, so certainly, certainly I, I should not use the self-checkout line anymore. But uh, I think at least for the next time I go grocery shopping, I might go someplace else. Yeah. I You know, maybe it was just a, it was just a look that landed the wrong way, that came out wrong, you know? I think it, I, I mean, it, it was a look. But I, I think it came out the intended way, and I should have just yeah. stopped and proven it. I, I, uh, why are you looking no... at me? Why are you looking at me like that for? <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I've got no method of defending myself in in that type of situation, other than uh, calling a lawyer from the station. I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah, well. Just just go to that store again and do a uh, regular checkout, and then that way their last memory of you would be as an honest paying customer, you know. Which I am and always am. I but that you know that way that memory would uh, supplant the false memory, false previous memory, you know, that may have existed. Yeah, you know, you're only as good as your most recent work, you know. And if you just take like your stuff to the uh, to the you know the the uh, human the, the human cashier. You know yeah. they'll remember you. Like, oh, at least he paid for his stuff that one, last time. You know. Yeah, the, I, I don't know because the... I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure like they, they go on their breaks in the break room. They're sitting around talking about like what like every customer they had. You know. Yeah. You I... know, like, oh, this guy comes in. Like, how 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 many times a week do you come in? Like once a once, week. Tw- once a week. I, I yeah, they're like I don't like to. Yeah. yeah, like they're like, yeah, I bet, I bet they're all on their break, like sitting around, they're like, oh, did you see that one guy? He comes here, he comes here like every week, you know, or so. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> I think he may have stolen something. He used two bags instead of one. I, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's how it is, like in the back of the store. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like uh, some places, uh, they'll take it really serious. Uh, some places will have like a hands off. We're not going to chase anybody. It's not worth it. Sometimes it's something in the middle. I I don't I don't know what what potential uh, fallout from that could be. It. Uh, oh yeah, I'm uh, pretty sure it's like I'm pretty sure you're on the top of their docket when they have their uh, morning I, meetings. <laughs> I, I'm, I I'm pretty know. sure that they got they pass your picture around in the boardroom. I yeah I I I, I maybe. But there's a maybe, sock problem. <laughs> maybe I I don't know. I I I think it probably depends on uh, uh, the attitudes of the owners or management and uh, uh, how much uh, they lose <laughs> from people stealing things. Oh but, yeah. But I I don't I'm know. Pre- I'm pretty sure like the manager of that place is like still thinking about like two weeks later. It's like. I lost so much money from this yeah. from this guy. I don't know how much or what it is, but this guy is really uh he's really taking us for a wash, you know. Uh, like, I, I don't know what he's taking, I don't know how much it's he's stealing, you know. I haven't like checked the numbers, but you know, I'm pretty sure they're still thinking about that, you know. I don't know. I I, I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't know any of that. I just uh like I just wanted to go to the store and buy things without yeah. without it being an issue. And it's an issue now. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure like they're like hit, like they have you know how like you hand like a, like a hitman like a folder with like pictures of your targets. Yeah. I'm pretty sure like uh everyone in the uh district is like has like you know someone's like giving them like a fi- like a folder with your photos in them. Oh and oh, they're all like I... t- like taken like by a private investigator so you know it's like all like you're, you're in your car or something or like in your house <laughs> i yeah i i don't know it, uh i i That's don't know pretty reasonable scenario <laughs> i i don't know what's reasonable i i i don't know i don't know if they had cameras on my face or what i i, yeah. I do know that we've got uh less than a minute and i hate to do it but i think i think we need to I think we need to rush away after after that little humiliation. So uh you, you got any good shout outs, George, to end the end this uh lovely time? Newark, Delaware. Newark, Delaware. Uh uh don't don't do anything suspicious in beautiful Newark, Delaware. Newark. New Newark. That's what I said. It's it's pretty tricky. Oh yeah, yeah. Newark. Newark, Newark. Uh, I well, that's how it is. Yeah, well, I'm, I believe you. Well, uh, on that note, all right. Well, hey, sorry about that. It doesn't uh, count down the minute. It just says one minute. So I, I missed that. All right. Well, I'd like to. Uh, so about Newark, D- Delaware. Uh, shout out, shout out to you guys. Oh yeah, they're yeah. at the home of uh, Harry Coover. He was the guy who invented super glue. Oh wow. wow! You know what? Uh, yeah. You know what's crazy about him? Uh, no. He was born eighteen ninety nine. Guess what? T- what year he died? Uh, what? Two thousand eleven. Oh my goodness! It's uh, yeah. He was like, he was one hundred twelve. Oh, the numerologists are gonna have a a field day. What could it all mean? Well, that's just a long time to live, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's like a, that's probably top one percent of lifespans right there, at least. Yeah, yeah. Very, very few people do that. Uh, so, uh, well, a, a shout out to uh, to that, uh, and uh, everybody who uh, lives to be over a hundred, uh, and uh, so- signing off. I, I am. All right. Well, it's uh, now it's time for uh, the uh, the honk honk across America. All right, uh, three, two, no, one. No. All right, guys, have a good one. I'll um, see you in the next one. Yeah, stay classy. <laughs> <laughs>